Hello my roses, this is Budgeting Rose and on today's video I'm going to be discussing the film, well it wasn't a film, it was a series uh, called Motherland. It's on. I watched it on Hulu. This episode I'm discussing is season one, episode two, titled Eugene, Oregon. It's about a lonely teenager who encounters an unwelcome guest. Dun dun dun. So the part I'm going to talk about is that, um, so he lives with, it's him and his mother. And his mother apparently last year had a stroke. She can't work right now and he takes care of her. Uh, so in the first scene in the movie, why do I keep calling it a movie? The first scene in the episode, he goes to the pharmacy to pick up one of her medications called Adivax, a 30 day supply, and finds out that it's no longer covered by her insurance. So the pharmacist was like, oh, okay, well, so of course he asked like, well, we have insurance, why isn't it? So she go, the pharmacist says, oh, it's no, the, farm, um, the insurance doesn't cover it anymore. That's so rude. And then, so obviously he, they were using the brand name. So the pharmacist suggests, okay, why don't you switch to generic? And usually more likely than not, they'll probably cover that. But then he says that his mom had already tried the generic before and she just kept vomiting. So generic doesn't work for her. So uh, the cost of the medication for one month was $248.61. He can't afford that. <laughs> He's a teenager who barely, I don't even think he graduated high school. Not that it matters, but he was working at like a Burger King and then he gets fired. But either way, the money he was trying to make wouldn't have been enough because, you know, they need other things. And yeah. And also, yeah, no, it wasn't. It's not going to work. So um, he digs through his pockets, finds he has thirty eight dollars and just asks, like, what can I get for thirty eight dollars? So he I, 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 I paused and I was like, mm, one, two, three, four, five. How many pills did he get? So it looked like he got about six pills. So that means each pill was about six dollars and thirty three cents. OK, so without talking about the rudeness of how in the U.S. our insurance is tied to our jobs so we are all at the mercy of just a little background we're all at the mercy of our employer in terms of what type of insurance they decide to pick for us so a lot of times your insurance will be horrible so it goes like this you pay into it you the person who's going to be insured you pay into it before you get your check they take money out to pay for that insurance your employer pays some amount towards your insurance. Then when you go to the doctor, you pay a copay towards that. So that's the second time you had to pay something. Then when you go to the pharmacy, the pharmacy part of your insurance, you go pick up your medication, you'll have a copay sometimes. So then you're paying again for something with your insurance. But obviously, if you didn't have insurance, all of this would be a lot more expensive. And basically, yeah, so at the end, yes, we're all at the mercy of our insurance companies and what they cover, what they allow us to get. It's not a decision of like me and my doctor discussed this and we came up with, I need to take this medication. It's like me and my doctor talked, I need to take this medication. Did my insurance say it's okay for me to take this medication? Okay, well, your insurance wants you to try seven other things first. Okay, anyway, but that's my rant. Let me stop there. So in terms of this movie, what would have that I just was so disappointed in the pharmacist. Obviously, pharmacists are overextended and this isn't their they're not the problem. The problem is the insurance company and the power they have over us. But there are certain things that could have been done. So I just I was just disappointed that um she didn't like say this one thing. So because the mom, his mom was already on the brand name and it's been working for her. Great. They already tried the generic. It didn't work. So now she, he would need to go back to his mom's doctor and tell them like, hey, my, medi my mom's medication is no longer covered. And the doctor now needs to do the paperwork. There's a lot of paperwork. I don't know the paperwork, but put in the paperwork. 
asking the insurance company, letting the insurance company know like, hey, this patient really needs this medication in order to live. Um, we already tried the generic, which you all suggested because it's cheaper for you all. It doesn't work. And so please look at it again. She needs this brand name medication. We're asking you to cover it. And so the insurance company, they have doctors, nurses, and regular people in there, and they will make a decision. And hopefully that decision would have been like, okay, yes, we will give you guys an override and we will cover this medication. And then boom, bam, boom, should be able to get that medication. But it's a long and tedious process. Your doctor has to be willing to do the, the paperwork and you, the patient who's sick, have to be willing to like advocate for yourself. So it's just a whole rude system, but that would have been what I would have recommended for him to do. So, but he is, he's a teenager and his mom is sick. She had a stroke. And when you're sick, you just want to get better. You don't have time to be here advocating and fighting for, you're fighting for your life already. And then now you're fighting for these other things. Um, and then also, as I was watching the film, uh, the show, I was thinking about the fact that, you know, his mom had a stroke. She had a stroke last year. And I don't think, like, she needs physical therapy. She needs speech therapy. She needs occupational therapy. Because usually with a stroke, you know, one side of your body is basically paralyzed and can't move. So you need the proper medications to slow that down. Then you need the preventative me medication to stop that from happening again. Obviously, I'm not a pharmacist or a doctor. I'm just talking about I'm a layman who just... <laughs> with a Google search, okay? And then um, you also need physical therapy to get back your, you know, ability to walk and to move regularly again. You need occupational therapy so you can use your fingers, you know, you can relearn these things that you, your brain right now doesn't remember how to do. You need, um, and then she needs basically somebody to come in there um on a daily basis to an aid basically to help her with like cleaning her you know washing cleaning her taking her to her appointments because yes her son is there but that's a lot of things to do for one person so he also needs a break um okay so um so those were the things I was thinking about as I was watching it, besides the main storyline, which wasn't about this pharmacy stuff. It was um, about he sees a shadow it, um, and the shadow like moves. It's not his shadow. The shadow just moves by itself. And then he goes online, you know, and it, it seemed friendly because like he, he waved, it waved back. I was just like, demons. <laughs> Why are you talking to the demons? Stop it. <laughs> It didn't talk. Um, and then when he did like a duck thing, like with a shot with his shadow, then the um, the shadow imitated him. So it seemed like, oh, OK, it's a cutesy, you know, it wasn't harming and harming anybody or anything at that moment. But then he goes online to like look it up and then he finds a group of people and they're just all about that. The shadows caused all the problems like any issue you have in your life it's those shadows that made it happen but like so then he starts like okay believing the group and then he goes on a well you have to watch it to <laughs> to see what happens later but for me the financial aspect that i wanted to discuss was that in the beginning um and it was literally like the first two minutes of it when it started that the pharmacy scene happened and that's what i'm talking about there was a lot more to the to it and i think it's commentary on like what you believe something is like he when he first interacted with the shadow it wasn't a threat but then he talked to this group and then they're like it's a threat and then all that shenanigans that happened afterwards but we're here for the finances part so if you watch it let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section and i'll see you in my next video bye my roses bye